I always had an affinity with him because he was left-handed and he had blue eyes and he was born in, you know, he's a Gemini like me and he was into the Beatles and that's, that's what I was and I was like, fucking hell. And um, Mark Coyle, who co-produced Definitely Maybe, at that time was doing monitors for the Teenage Fan Club when they went on the world tour with Nirvana. And I said, what's he like? And he said, you fucking love him, he's great. He's crazy as fuck, but he's great. Um, I'm gutted that he died before I met him. I would have loved to have sat and fucking, you know, shot the fucking shit with him. But, um, that, you know, all, all, all the great albums, like Nevermind the Bollocks, they, all, they just get greater with time. And they start off by being, you know, the album of the year, and then they just never date. They never, 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 never date. And if you listen to, you know, never mind, it, it, it still like, still sounds like the future of rock. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, the same with Fool's Gold by the Stone Roses. Somebody could record that tomorrow and it would still fucking sound like the most contemporary piece of um, music ever. That's why definitely maybe is never dated for some, and it's not, it wasn't by design, all these things happen by accident, it's just, you know, somebody's got an ear for melody and it's just alchemy that happens in the studio, whatever it is, but, yeah, but never mind, it, you know, I, 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 I guess everybody who's into music and particularly alternative music will always remember where they were when they first heard Nevermind.